you know, especially for example, my mom, when I came back from Thailand in the teacher training, she's nonstop talking about how proud she is on where I was and where I'm at. And I, I loved that and I felt that and I was so happy that I made her happy. But then at some point she started to see me go down and get upset or be down about a certain thing. And that's where I started to realize what I'm trying to tell you is, you know, it's not a one way road, but then life tests you. And I say it in one of my poems in mysterious ways and uh, unexpectedly. And it's just, that's honestly the beauty of life. So, uh, what's your full name by the way? Mohammed Faisal Mohammed Mustafa bin Abdul Latif Al Abbasi. <laughs> if you want, if you want, that's, a, that's like okay, it reminded me of my you, first days if, in America. If, if when you I want the full name, that's the full name. Those the first days when I was in America. I had to say the full name. People are like, "What? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. how many names do you guys have?" Okay, I just want to uh, thank you. Tell you, I'm grateful that you're here. Um, so. A brief Thank introduction you. about you, um, and I'm going to say this really quickly, and then we'll expand on it. Sure. Um, you're an entrepreneur. Uh, you've been an entrepreneur since I met you. Um, I think it was about 20, 21. Yeah, yeah. How old were you then? 20, 21. You were 20, 21. Yeah. And you're 31 now. 31 yeah. on the it's 31st. 10 years now. 31 on the 31st. <laughs> okay. Wow. All right. And uh, you are an ex-professional athlete. Yes. We share keeper. that in common. Um, and you are, you've recently become uh, a yoga teacher. Yes. Um, are there any other Emirati men that are yoga teachers that you know of? Um, initially, I didn't uh, know of any. And, you know, through the community, everyone was saying that I was the first. Uh, but then I did find um, someone in Abu Dhabi who, who also teaches. And, um, you know, we actually got in contact and we still need to meet. We haven't met up yet. Um, but then I realized also that being the first or the second or the last, especially in something like this, is it's not about that. Yeah. And yoga is not really a competition thing anyway. It's not like you see competitions of people doing yoga. Yeah. Yoga is for the self and yoga is for creating impact, uniting people to getting into a an inward journey, you know, benefiting yourself and realizing that this inward journey is a never ending. You know, it's, and I actually always say that in my class. It's so one of my phrases, I say, an inward journey that's a never ending story. And I think along this conversation, we'll, we'll realize a lot of that, okay. how it's never ending. I'm excited about that. Yeah. Okay, so I agree with you that, you know, in certain areas of life or in certain practices, self practices or whatever, you have to be humble, you have to be uh, open, and you have to think about things that way specifically with practices like yoga, being a yoga teacher, because you are breaking through at the end of the day, you're breaking through the paradigm, you're breaking through what the definition of an Emirati man is. What um, do you feel was the most important event in your life that allowed you to open up a little bit and start thinking that this might be a route for you? Um, I mean, you know, we all go through our ups and downs in life. Um, and that's, it's, it's a constant, it's out of our control. It's all about how we deal with it. You know, when we go through, especially the downs, it's just like when you talk about the strength in a relationship, it's not about the good times and the happy days. It's about how you really fill in the patches at the bottom and grow through them as a couple or a friend or a family member. Um, and there was a specific down that I went through that uh, that put me through some somewhat of a traumatic experience, I'd say. Maybe the lowest I've ever been in a mental state. You know, I'm quite outgoing, quite confident. I'm, you know, I like to make things happen and um, very social. But this period in my life really put me in a like a tunnel vision. And I felt like I was running away from everything. And, uh, and um, thankfully, uh, out of nowhere, I found a commercial talking about stress relief yoga. Uh, so I went to that class, felt the benefit right away. Let's do it again, did it again and again and again and again. And then I stopped and jumped back into that 
same, you know, whole, but in a much deeper way where it wasn't even tunnel vision. There was no light at the end of the tunnel at that point. Um, and Alhamdulillah, I'm very grateful, number one, to, to have my family support, to, to have found something like yoga that, that gives me that peace and as well as to, to, to get back to my faith as well, you know, and uh, realize that everything happens for a reason and for the better. Another thing I do also like to, I would like to, you know, break as well is the idea that people have of yoga being a religion. Yoga is a self journey. It's a way of living. It's not a religion. It's not a, you know, it's for everybody. For example, when I teach my classes now, at the end of my class, um, normally at the end, you know, they, they, they put their heart, hands to heart and they go namaste, which I have no issue with namaste. It's a beautiful meaning and namaste has, it, it, with all intentions, it's a great thing to, to do and say. But because Can I want to- just I say wanna, what namaste means? What does it mean to you? To me, I'd say it's like, it's like an, it's like a humble way of thanking someone and being appreciative and grateful for sharing whatever you had just shared. Um, but what I do in my classes, for example, salam alaikum, peace and blessings be upon you. In my classes at the end, I, I thank them for being a part of my story, my journey. And I put my hand up and I say, salam alaikum. And the most beautiful thing is you have people doing that, bowing down, saying wa alaikum as -salam, And that's the definition of yoga. Mm -hmm. Yoga def by definition means unity. So if, if I can get onto the story, because we're, we're already touching on this. In my teacher training in Thailand, we had to do like a paper exam and then we had to do a practical. And the teacher said that I have to base my class off a theme. So I always like to relate things from where I come from, which is from the UAE. And of course, I'm also very proud of being um, half English as well. My mother's from London, um, but this is my home and this is my country. So when they said, base it off a theme, I was trying to think, what can I use? And I thought the perfect thing was tolerance. We had 2018 as a year of tolerance. So um, what I did was in my class, teacher didn't know this. I said, okay, my class would be on tolerance. And I wrote a poem on tolerance. And then in the beginning of the class, I had my yoga mat as I teach in front of the, you know, the students. And then I placed another yoga mat facing towards Mecca with my wizar, which is like, you know, the, um, like you call it like a sarong, mm -hmm. you know, to cover, cause I was wearing short shorts. And I sat down in front of everyone and I said, guys, uh, my, th my theme today, our class will be themed on tolerance and we're gonna connect emotionally, we're gonna connect physically, you know, with the music and the, the asanas, the movements, but I would like to connect spiritually. And how we're gonna do that is whatever your belief is, you're an atheist, you're a Buddhist, you're a Christian, you're a Jew, doesn't matter. Whatever puts your mind at peace, dedicate these couple of minutes before we start our practice to a prayer. My name is Muhammad and I'm a Muslim and that yoga mat over there is pointing towards Mecca. And that's how we pray as Muslims, obviously to educate. So by all means, please take this time. I get up, you know, I start doing my, you know, prayers. Behind me is my teacher who's a Buddhist and she starts praying. Beside me is someone that doesn't believe in a God. And then you can imagine the situation. So that, and I felt that that was one of the most beautiful things I've ever done. And you can't imagine when we finished praying and started the practice together, we felt the definition of yoga, unity. So when people have these ideas about yoga being, no, you know, you shouldn't do it because it's X, Y, and Z. And it's, it's, it's a, you know, it doesn't follow our way, you know, some people go into it to, a, you know, to an extreme where they, they hold it as that. But sometimes you can look at things that have beauty in it and make it your own. And that's what tolerance is. You know what I mean? Do you face that uh, right now as, as Muhammad and Emirati? Do you face that um, kind of criticism or, or uh, pushback on yoga because it's viewed as something that's not culturally appropriate? Thankfully, no, I know it's coming, but uh, 
But even even better to answer your question, I've been receiving messages from people, you know, Muslims, or, you know, Arabs that are interested in yoga but are avoiding it because they're so into their faith that they've been because of what they heard, it kind of like pushes them away from doing it. So I've been receiving a lot of messages and calls asking me, how are you doing this? And is this true? And how do you feel about this? And when I share that, they go, thank you so much. I'm so much more aware of what it is now. And um, I'm happy I can now embrace it with open arms and not be worried that it's affecting my faith. At the end of the day, everything in life is intention. When you roll the mat out, your intention is to practice, to keep your mind at peace, to work your mental health, your spiritual and your physical health. You know? I mean, at the end of the day, in our religion says, right? Which exactly. is a very basic founding principle of everything we do. Yeah. And that's in yoga. They always say, set your intention before yeah. the class. Yes. All, yeah. all faiths, all yeah. philosophies are all about intention because intentions are extremely powerful. For example, another relation I remember in, um, we were learning Thailand and obviously we would do meditation every day for about two hours or morning and evening. And um, she, they said, so we were talking about umming, like, um, you know, and they said that it was known to be the first sound on earth and it gives off positive vibration. You know, and every time we would do the um collectively, I'd always feel like a relation to it. And I never remembered why. And then I remembered that whenever I pray as a group, you know, as, you know, as a Muslim, we say, you know, we don't say, I mean, we say, Amin. and, and every time that does happen, and I'll never forget since I was a child, mm-hmm. I always felt that. Mm. energy and, 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 and like subhanallah I'm, I'm on an island in the middle of nowhere you know we're, we're studying you know completely different philosophies and here we are having so much of a relation to to uh, to what I'm learning and it's completely different as well mm. and that's what I mean by you take good from things as well mm. you know it's good to go into things in life with an open mind you know when you when you go too close minded and and blocking the roads, it's it's kind of like hard to hard to grow, you know, because you know the type of world we live in today, we're we're connected with the push of a button to anywhere in the world, and that's that's actually a blessing instead of a curse, to be able to to learn from different cultures, to accept different you know belief systems, cultures, and 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 share. That's the most important. That's what we are as people. We're here to share, to live together, and and unite. And uh, unfortunately, you know, some people may have some mentalities or states of mind where they kind of like, you know, very uh, stubborn, I'd say maybe, to not want to accept anything but who they are, you know. And that's fine. It's, it's, it's okay. It's good to have your own, but it's also good to open your arms and accept and learn because it's the only way to grow, you know. How, how did this... Everything you're speaking about now, your your own philosophy, your own um, way you translate yoga to people um, through what you've experienced. How much has it? How much has all of your your philosophy in life? How much has it changed pre and post yoga? We were talking about this now. I've, you know, when I when I went through this journey, which for me was by far the best thing I've ever done. When I had come back home, I was, you know, there in Thailand for two months um, and I was doing yoga for a year and a half prior uh, and it really helped me. So that's why, actually I decided to go and teach because of the benefit that yoga had given me. I said, what can I do other than my business endeavors? Like, you know, things quite can be very transactional. And I wanted to do something in my life where it's more about, you know, impacting lives in a deeper way. And I asked myself, what can I do? And the only solution was to go and teach yoga. What can I do that gives the same benefit to people that yoga gave me? It was an easy answer. Go learn how to teach. No research, just flew to Thailand, arrived in Ireland, uh, made some beautiful friends that are really close today. Uh, can call that place my uh, home as well, you know, with the transformation that I had there. Came back to Dubai. And this is a conversation we were having where 
that's it. I feel like I'm enlightened. I've hit the pinnacle. I've hit that that place. This is when you arrived. When, when I arrived when back, I'm like fresh off the boat. Yeah, back fresh. Boat. I'm like yeah. I'm I'm fresh off the boat. I'm when good. everything I'm, looks blue and I'm green. Zen, and, I'm, and and <laughs> and I was working continuously to towards that. Yeah. But then again, you know, life tests you constantly. You know, and um, whether it be in relationships or or in your personal life, family, whatever it may be. As much as you think you've hit it and you're there and you think there's only one way, you know, I started to be more aware of certain behavioral patterns slowly creeping back in, you know? And that's why I always say it's an inward journey that's a never ending story. And, um, you know, and obviously the certain experiences that I had gone through all have to do with mental health. And yoga is a huge, huge benefit to add to someone that has, and I think we all some to some degree have somewhat of a mental health, I don't want to call it issue, but something we can work towards. Yeah, absolutely. No one is perfect, right? Like they all say. So I think yoga is the perfect thing to get into. But where I was at was I started to learn about certain patterns and behaviors of myself that I was completely unaware of. And I think, you know, again, the stigma of going to yoga is, you know, for women or it's, 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 it's a religion and you shouldn't do it. Another stigma is, you know, talking to someone, speaking to a therapist, you know, it's like frowned upon for some reason. And I think, you know, just like you go to the gym and work out to have your physical body healthy. I think at times in life, it's very important to, you know, speak to someone, even sometimes they don't even, whether it's a therapist, friend, someone, sometimes they don't even have to reply. Just by venting it out, you start to become more aware of yourself, especially if your intention's already there, you know? And again, it can repeat, it can come back. It's never, you know, going forward is never constant. You get pulled back, you go into old patterns, but the most important part of being able to pull yourself out of those patterns and grow and learn through those patterns are number one, being more aware of them. Number one, knowing that how far you've come and, and what you've done to, you know, for your journey to achieve, you know, this kind of mental state that puts you in a place where, you know what, I can see things clearer now. I can see I'm doing this wrong. I can see I'm, I'm pushing too hard here. I can see I'm, but again, you're not perfect. You can maybe see, but still do. And, and that's the part where I feel like I've grown the most is where I thought I was really grown until I got pulled back into a certain, like some of my old patterns. And then that's where I was like, okay, I started to speak to family, speak to friends, maybe speak to a therapist as well. And I started to learn more about myself. And I started to accept, you know, you have to accept, you know, that you are not perfect, especially when you're in this like high that you've come back from somewhere and think that you've hit that, you know, uh, pinnacle state or whatever. You know, you have to accept that, you know, you have your flaws and until you accept and are more aware, that's where constant transformation and positivity and growth happens. I always say also in, in my poems, I say, hardships are growth, how can you not see? You know, um, which I really enjoy doing. I actually used to write uh, songs when I was younger, but I never really shared it. And I love to write, you know, and it's also in our culture, you know, poetry. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing that I brought that came along as an Imanati teacher, where I bring poetry into yoga and, um, um, you know, at the end, for example, saying, Samaikam, you make it your own. So, so poetry to you is, is something that um, has been there a constant in your life, I'm guessing, from what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, I used to write, I always used to write, but I just never really... Shared. Really shared. Maybe I'd, I'd, you know, personally share it with individuals, but not as a public thing. But I think yoga became the perfect platform for me to be able to share it with more than just one this person. This is a perfect platform for you to share Here something. as well, exactly. Hey, will you read something for us? Uh, sure, I can. Okay. I can. Um, can you contextualize it, though, before you read it? But con uh, speaking about this theme for this poem, this one is, for example, I give a theme on, on home. 
home meaning yourself, you know. And uh, another thing I always talk about is being grateful. I, every class I say, being uh, taking a deep inhale in and exhaling it out, being aware of many things, one of the many things we take for granted, like our breath, roof over our head and food on our table. Because the smallest things are li in life that we take for granted are actually the biggest. And I always repeat those things. Now home means yourself, your inward journey. And then as you, you know, focus on that and work towards that, you manage to create a finer version of yourself, the, hopefully the best, but this is, I don't believe in best, this better version of yourself. Even better. Even better, and then even better, and then pull back, but then try and come back again. And that's, that's, that's the beauty of having also loved ones around you, because when you get pulled back, you have that push with, uh, you know, people that care about you now. Basically, you understand the, the concept of home. So it'd be like a key that opens all doors to your soul, somewhere inwards, that starts giving you peace. Flip the switch off and find the release, closing your eyes and feeling at home, constantly constructing, beautifully absorbing life. It shakes the roof and don't mind the chips, glass scattered unfixable. We move on to what's next, just be forgivable. An attraction, energy contagious. I just want to lay in and learn through your stages. The ups, the downs, and what brought you the strength to turn the pages. Look after it, cherish, for it is your home, and without it there would be no merit in this. Just place your hands to heart and forgive yourself for all the mess. Swipe that tear away now that grew you through the test. Embrace your being and don't be a guest. Prioritizing your home, protecting your soul, and planting the seeds that make you abundant and grow. Bless that heavenly place for yourself and anyone who deserves that space. It's uniqueness, don't worry, they'll find your taste. A miracle going inwards, creating bliss. Put your hands to heart, it's not a story of a hit and miss. You, your home, your temple that will soothe your soul. Start within, then cater to all those that are worthy of the journey you have gone through, grown through, and ready to let life give to. So be present with yourself. That will be your present to your home. And then, you know, we keep quiet. That would be in Shavasana, for example, and the resting pose at the end, corpse pose. And then there'll be a music playing, and then we slowly get up. Then we do some breath work, maybe an arm at the end altogether. Salam alaikum. Class ends. So it's a, it's we connect in a you know in a very beautiful way in the sessions, and I I really enjoy doing this. That's amazing. Thank you. That's really nice. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. Now the public knows. <laughs> <laughs> it's out in the open. <laughs> okay. I would like to kind of track back a little bit and touch base on something that is very dear to my heart um, and something I've been trying to speak about for quite a while now and, and the reason why I do what I do, which is um, mental health. But as I said, it's very important to contextualize it sometimes as somebody that is an Emirati man, an Arab man, a Muslim man, you start going out a little bit and in specific with uh, issues when it comes to mental health. I see that there's a huge shift in our society, specifically here yeah. um, in Dubai and the UAE, um, and how we are accepting that and how we are accepting our vulnerability as men and equally how we're accepting the feminine energy and accepting women in a completely different way. We can see it in our politics, we can see it in our in our day to day, it's not perfect. It's not perfect anywhere else. I'm not going to say it is. I just want you to speak on your journey with vulnerability and your journey with acknowledging your emotions and acknowledging that there was something off that you needed to work on For sure. and that it's okay yeah. to not be okay, as they say, yeah. and, and start from there. So can you talk to us a little bit about that? For sure. I mean, touching on also, uh, you know, the change in especially this society here. Um, I mean, I noticed that growing up as a child, maybe myself or even friends, there's certain terms used 
as parents, maybe brothers, maybe friends at school, maybe even teachers, whatever, where it can have an effect on, on sharing that vulnerability or emotion as a male, Arab, Muslim, whatever it may be, but growing up where somebody could tell you, say for example, you know, if you were to be down about something or, if, or for example, if a child gets hurt, you know, a boy gets hurt and he's crying and he's like, don't cry, you're not a man, grow up, you're a boy, you don't cry. You know, these things have an effect uh, in the long term. And, um, and thankfully, you know, things are starting to change for the, for the brighter side and the positive. And touching on your point with myself, to be honest with you, um, I never ever really knew what self-love meant until I went on this journey. And even more so, I think, you know, as you start to, cause you know, us as human beings were about, you know, being with one another in different types of relationships, right? And you start to learn through these different relationships more about yourself. Um, and I remember in my past, certain behaviors, I would be very block, I'd like block things off and not want to accept or be aware that it's okay, that, you know, this is a flaw that I have, and this is something that I would need to be aware of, and I need to be willing enough to work for it, first of all, for myself, and second of all, for the people that I love, that are that are around me, that care for me, because it's very important. So for example, uh, <laughs> touching on your point, um, I started to notice, for example, there are certain traits that I had behaviors. Mm -hmm. Say for example, if you're, if you're uh, with someone in a relationship or a friend, whatever it may be, you need to understand first that people are different and you can't expect everyone to you know, give off what you want. As much as you have to put the spotlight on you, you have to turn around and say, okay, if I care for this person and I want to keep them in my life, I need to be aware that their values, whether I agree with them or not, are valid. And in order for me to, you know, embrace this relationship in the right manner, I need to have that number one. Then I need to put the spotlight in myself to understand where my behaviors are that can maybe help this scenario. And then at the same time, I need to ask myself, whether it's my partner, friend, family, whatever, what can I do for this person, you know, in order to, to be able to, because in life, you know, we're all on our own journeys. And when you, for example, get into a relationship, you're not here to change people. You're here to grow together as individuals and then collectively, so I like to say, celebrate each other's growth because you supported each other, you motivated each other. And guess what? It's normal in relationships. You have your downs, you, you know, you have those flaws and you know, you have your mishaps, you know, or even friendships, but that's where these qualities in life that I'm talking about, which is being more forgiving, accepting, aware, the ones that I constantly preach in yoga. And again, getting back to one point that I wanted to touch on, I've been doing so much teaching that I started to lose my own practice. You know, and it got to a point where I felt like standing in front of the class and reading these poems and messages, because not all the time I go into a class, I'm up there, you know? So I started to realize that I need to maybe stop, take a step back and start to focus on my own practices. And when I say practice, I don't just mean yoga practice. I mean, my self awareness, my, my mind, the way I think, the things I do, the behaviors that I think that I need to fix or tweak or, you know, replace, you know, you can never, never have negativity. You cannot remove negativity. You can replace negativity with positivity. And, um, so uh, one thing I wanted to, 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 to comment on that, because I'd like to, I'd like to go there to, to a different place with this conversation sure. because, and I'm really glad you touched on that, which is something you mentioned already, which is, um, this concept of self-love, right? Yeah. When you look at it through the lens of what you're saying right now and can, and how most people contextualize the inner work you're talking about, most people, I think the reason why they don't want to go there because they feel like that's self-criticism rather than self-love, right? They think that if I point the finger at myself or look at myself in the mirror and look at my flaws, 
right? That I am somehow betraying myself, that I'm somehow saying I'm less than, or I don't have this, or I don't have that. When the reality is, when you do that work that you're talking about, from the perspective that you're talking about, it's actually self-love. I really, really want you to talk about that. Because if you don't love yourself first, how are you going to be able to love other people? How are you going to be able to give people love if you don't have it internally, right? And this is the issue and the topic I want to dive into, again, with the context of being a man, with the context of being an Arab man. And I just want to guide that back towards there. Your realization right now that your self-practice is not as um, taken care of as giving people, as teaching people, right? I think you've touched on something because, sorry, please go on. No, no, go ahead. No, because you've, you've touched on something and I've just gotten aware on something <laughs> as you spoke just Great. now. Go ahead. I was going to tell you, you know, you were talking about the definition of self-love and, um, you know, that it's like self-criticism. But my ex or previous uh, definition of self-love was selfishness. I used to, it could be the opposite. I used to think that self-love, somebody says, oh, self-love, 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 means they're selfish. S self-love means love others and then love will come, you know? Uh, like a give and take situation. Mm. That's definitely not the way. Um, and I just wanted to add that. So if you want to go on and then I no, can. No, please go ahead. Um, Expand on that. I'd, I'd really like to know more. Yeah, so I, that's, that was my previous idea on, uh, on what self-love was. It was selfish. And today I think it's, it's priority by all means. Um, but again, like I said, inward journey, never ending story. You know, today I can turn around and tell you, I love myself. Tomorrow I can, I can feel down and maybe that love can slowly, it's, it's, it's a push and pull, you know, the, the graphs never just go up, you know, it's, it's, you know, that's the whole point. And that's the beauty of life actually, is that when these things happen, you as an individual become aware and grow from it. And as a unity, as a family, as a, as a brother, as a friend, as a sister, you know, as a husband, as a boyfriend, whatever it may be, uh, um, you start to, you know, be aware of these things in your partners or people in your lives, and you try and assist that, you know, in the in the most positive way by being an example of that first. Mm -hmm. Then, yeah, being an example of that first, I'd say. And then, you know, sometimes people learn in different ways. So being an example, it's not working that way. So then you, you know, because of the care that you may have, you try another route, you try another route. But what I've learned to date is these other routes you try, you gotta give them time, you gotta give them space, and you gotta give them patience. You can't demand the change now because it's clear for you, it's not clear for them. Because everybody's going through their own journey. Exactly, and I think that's something that I've, you know, recently really, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm really, really glad to have this conversation because right now I, I genuinely also feel um, so much better about the certain experiences that I've been going through. And, you know, the, you know, for example, the people that I've been speaking to, whether it's friends, family, or even uh, the therapists. And, uh, and I feel, I, I really do feel like I'm headed in the right direction for myself and for the people that I care about and love in my life. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll contextualize that for you from a, from a scientific perspective, sure. right? So the way we perceive reality, okay, or the way we project reality, the reality we're living, everything we see and we experience is based on our internal conditions, right? So it's a reflection or a mirror of how we've been conditioned to see things. Mm. So when it comes to relationships, when it comes to your career, when it comes to stuff like you're talking about, what is self-love? This is also something you're taught. If you're taught that self-love is you giving outwards and not receiving, then that's something you've learned probably from your parents when you were early on, how your mom was, how your dad was, how 
you you you've observed it somehow in your relation in their relationship or something like that okay so what ends up happening in life is because you have this condition or this program in your subconscious right you go out about life thinking that this is the condition of all that there is and what your unconscious mind or your subconscious mind wants to do is it wants you to get rid of that condition it wants you to find out that there is something in there that's not giving you the best quality of life right so you will see that in your life often repeatedly you will see it in a relationship and most people that went through what you've been through i guarantee you i don't know much but if i ask you you'll say yeah you know every single love relationship i've had has had almost the same repeated pattern right these patterns are generated by your subconscious mm. that's why people say when there are quote unquote bad things happening to you in your life right it's actually the best thing that's ever happened to you and all of us when we look at it as something that happened in the past right we say thank god this happened yeah, to me it taught me moment, so much yeah. you know it saved me from this i could have gone into that that wasn't the right person that wasn't the right business whatever mm-hmm. right but as human beings our natural mode yeah. is to only see that when it's in hindsight yeah imagine the power of what it's like when you are able to see that every day every moment all of a sudden the bad things are not bad there is no good or bad there is only the definition that you've given a certain situation right so if you're able to be in a relationship let's talk about that in specific because that's what you brought up if you're able to be in a relationship and you're able to see the quote unquote bad things as good things then you elevate your relationship to another level this is when you start understanding that a relationship and the more intimate it is the more it is a mirror of yourself because whatever this person is presenting to you and is triggering you making you upset making you angry making you guilty making you jealous making you all these things that people talk about in relationships mm. and your relationships bring that out the most until you become a parent and you'll see that brings it out even more mm. right is that it all it's doing is your subconscious telling you you have this thing to work on right and you're contextualizing it beautifully that you said okay i'm in a situation now in my relationship or in my yoga practice or whatever where i feel like the one thing i learned when i was out in thailand right which is i need to work on myself constantly this is an inward stuff inward work is constant right it's a journey as you said and as soon as i ignored it life presented me with all these problems that made me realize well i've been i've gone back to this pattern where i'm giving too much and i'm not giving inwards so i need to go back to my practice and the beautiful thing is with practice right this is what i define resilience as you're going to become so resilient that you're going to pick up on these things immediately it's not going to take 2 weeks it's not going to take 3 weeks anymore yeah. and the severity of the ups and downs aren't going to be so yeah. much you're going to notice it very quickly you know you're going to be like oh okay i'm just right now i'm feeling a little negative i need to go meditate i need to go do my practice i need to you know seclude myself whatever you know that's you become What? like a less risky stock yes <laughs> instead yeah. of going there to there with yeah. volatility yes. you're kind of like yeah. there and yeah. because of the resilience yes. you know there's always a drop but it doesn't have to be that harmful yes exactly and that's and where you know beauty starts to arise absolutely yeah. and that's that's where people talk about sustainability how to be sustainably enjoy how to be sustainably at peace yeah is to not have these severe ups and downs you know and through this journey these ups and downs start become less and less and less the more you start knowing yourself the more you start understanding yourself the more you start loving yourself forgiving yourself these are kind of the the steps once you come to ultimate self forgiveness there it's really difficult not to forgive people because you start understanding how people operate and if you're forgiving yourself fully how can you not forgive other people the same concept as love if you love yourself fully how can you not love other people unconditionally this is the path that we're that we're all on the path to unconditional love it's 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 a it's kind of one of those things which is like the holy grail like you're mm. you're trying to find it like you're saying you're trying to find it and when you think you found it all of a sudden yeah. you realize that you haven't found it because exactly. this is our human experience our human experience is to experience that 
the ups and downs and learning and stuff like that. This is what our purpose is, mm. right? And if you start absor absorbing that and understanding that and loving your journey, right? Understanding that it had uh, the ups and downs are all part of it. There's no good or bad, right? It's just a positive and negative directional situation. And I think to touch on that positive and negative is also being aware, because I also never really used to think about energy as well in the past. When I used to think self-love is selfish, energy meant nothing to me. Like vi they say, you know, all vi I'd say it as a, as like a, you know, a term that was popular that you use, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm on a vibe, we're all vibing, we're having a good time. But that the real the hashtag, yeah, <laughs> good vibes only, whatever, <laughs> but like really understanding energy and, and what it, it does, the cause and effects of it through your actions that, that end up not only affecting others, but yourself as well. And that's when your behavior starts to change as well. And you're like, I don't want that energy. I'm not going to do this because I love myself enough not to give myself that energy. And I love myself enough to look after myself enough to not potentially feed that energy off to anybody else that I care about. You know, I think energy is also something that's come into as a, as a new, um, um, you know, I'd say it's not a trait. It's like, a, you know, just becoming more aware of it, basically, just being more aware of uh, the deeper meaning of energy through your the cause and effect of your actions. And again, I'm not perfect. You know, I may stumble back, but the goal, the constant journey, the never ending story is, like you said, is to make it as sustainable as possible mm. rather than being so volatile. And in the past, I was quite volatile. Um, and I'm not saying now I'm perfect. I may be here one day and I may come down, but I'm more aware when I come down and, you know, I, I'm trying to do what I can uh, with all honesty and and with the best of intentions to do the best for myself in order to be able to give off the best version of myself to the people that I love in my life. It comes down to choice, right? Ultimately, I believe that the human experience comes down to choice because if you start thinking about your choices and you start focusing on that, what you are really doing is you're focusing on the current moment, right? And if you think of every moment as a choice, every single choice that you do, right? That to me is the ultimate mode of spirituality and prayer, actually. Because if you are trying to bring the most positive values and the most positive belief systems into your choices every day, right? How you treat people, how you treat animals, how you treat your body, what you eat, how you sleep, all of these choices. You know, am I going to Netflix at night or am I going to go to sleep, you know, and give my body the rest it needs? Am I going to wake up at 5 a.m. and pray and do my yoga and love myself or not? Or am I going to sleep in? I'm not saying there's right or wrong. I don't believe in right or wrong. I live in a judgment free life. I'm just saying choice is the ultimate way. If you focus on your choices, it's one of the easiest tools that we can use. I, I use with a lot of my clients to understand how to be in the current moment, right? I just want a reflection on that from the journey you've been on and from the lens of a yoga teacher in specific. Well, I mean, uh, going back to my idea of self-love, like I said, uh, cause and effect and being more aware of energy, um, you know, and how, you know, your energy affects others as well as your choices affect others. Most important, most importantly, your choices affect you. Um, and again, you know, it's, 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 it, that's, I mean, if I look back at my life, I think I've done, I've done a lot of different things. You know, I've also done, we didn't touch on this, but I've, I've um, still actually doing it. Sometimes it comes on and off, but I act and I've done four movies. Um, I'm very grateful for all the experiences in my life. And I always say all the ups and especially the downs. Uh, because of the, when I say downs, because back in the day when I was at the downs, I'd always point fingers. But now in 
you know, I reverse that and I say, I look at the choices that I made to put me on those downs. And I look at how can I change my own and put the, like I said, spotlight on myself in order to make myself a better human being, to make, you know, a better impact in the world, to make a better impact in my teaching and classes, better energy, um, a better impact with, with, you know, the things that I do on a daily for myself, as well as, you know, for the people in my lives, like my, you know, the love of my life, my mother, my, 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 you know, my father, my family, my brothers, my sister, you know, my friends, you know, the people that are closest to me and care about me. What does the future look like to you? Um, it's a very good question. Um, I think, again, I have to say coming from a city like Dubai, we've been, you know, still, it's been instilled in our minds that, you know, impossible is really nothing. You know, it's, it's, it's so admirable what our leaders have done here. And I think in all aspects, when it comes to business career, but as well as, you know, family and yourself, I think, I think the future is very, 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 very bright, but I do know as bright as it is, at times it will get very dark. And I just need to be more aware of those dark times and how I handle it and how I sustain it. And I'm um, very grateful to be where I'm at right now and to have found yoga, to have right people around me to get closer to my faith and to have loving people around me as well is so important. And I'm very grateful for that. So yeah, very bright, but also it can be very dark, but it's just about, like I said, in relationships, you know, it's like the strength in a relationship is not the rainbows and butterflies. It's, it's, it's the bottom, it's the dark side, it's the holes and how you patch that and grow through that. That's how you really grow in life, anything. It's how you get out of those uh, situations that I was at, maybe it was almost a year and a half ago now, two years, that tunnel vision. And at some point there was no light at the end of the tunnel. So I'm very grateful to be sitting here and speaking the way I'm speaking. And, and I'm not saying I'm there. I thought I was when I came back from Thailand, but I know I got a lot of work to do. And uh, for myself, I got a lot of work to do for the people I care about. Well, I mean, the interesting thing is the more you start doing this work, as I told you, what ends up happening, going back to your subconscious and why things happen, is the more you start figuring things out that your subconscious wants you to, like when you went to Thailand and you figured the first level out, right? Yeah. Then it starts thinking, oh, okay, this guy's ready, you know? Now I'm going to give him the deeper stuff and it gives you even more deep stuff. And then you go through that and you go through your downs and you go through your up and then all of a sudden you're up again because at the end of the day, when it when you're up, your subconscious mind's thinking, okay, this is the best time that he can handle this, right? Subconscious is a direct relation to God, direct relation to the creator, energy, consciousness, whatever you want to refer to it as in, a, in this tolerant state we're in, right? What ends up happening? Why do they say God tests you? God is not testing you in the sense of a test. What God is trying to do is trying to elevate you and make you even better through these experiences, right? So the more you start being quote unquote enlightened, the more you start being um, more and more aware and self-loving, the more you're going to get quote unquote tested with heavier stuff, with bigger stuff. And then at the end of the day, you know, God doesn't give you more than you can handle. You know, he might push your handling to the limit, right? But he's not going to give you more than you can handle. And you've experienced that even at the darkest, darkest time, there was always a little bit of light, always. And as long as you acknowledge that light, as long as there's hope, then, and you focus on that light rather than this huge, ball of darkness, right? That light will start opening and pretty quickly, I have to say, you know, because the dramatic shift that you've been talking about, how you were for the longest time of your life and all these things that are happening, the ups and downs of business, relationships, love, whatever, right? And then you open this light of awareness. We acknowledged that 
depth that you were in as some as a biggest teacher and you look at that light and it opens up the change in comparison to the 29 years of crap that you've been going through right it's quite accelerated you know you have to you have to acknowledge that maybe crap a lot of good a lot of good yeah time. yeah no but i'm saying i'm talking about the crap stuff <laughs> right that led you to that moment yeah, yeah. right Oh, I'm, I'm always quote unquote because I don't believe that that's crap. Actually, yeah. I believe this is the best thing that's ever happened to you, right? But eventually, that light never becomes that small. There's always, the light is quite, it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. One last thing. Before, I'd like before. to touch on something. Okay. Right. So so let that be the last thing. Then, touch on that and then we'll... we'll no, I'd like to hear what you had to say. That's done. That's done. Uh, that's done. Yeah. Uh, no, as you were speaking, you told me about the future and what's the future like. And I talked about the city and I talked about, you know, looking very bright and very dark. But I think, I think really things that, that maybe we can possibly do to help the future, future, uh, become, you know, to grow and, and, and basically be it where it's at, but maybe, maybe work as a bit of a catalyst is I'd say maybe in the schooling systems, I think it's time where we start having more from a younger age, because this will help dramatically. Uh, and this is something I've really been trying to get into, which is, you know, getting, you know, schooling, um, like classes or subjects about mental health. I mean, s some places even sexual health isn't even involved and that's so important. But I mean, as we're having this discussion on mental health, mental health, you know, of, you know, anything that, you know, anything along the lines of being mindful of the self, you know, and qualities of life, and of course, you know, religion, you know, does uh, classes, uh, does play that part. But I think, you know, sometimes it's good to, you know, some people don't like to get forced, you know, so when they're spoken to in that, they kind of like turn their head away, but it's, and if it's, if it's given in a different route, they get also kind of directed onto the mm -hmm. faith side, because once they're more aware and realize they become a bit more faithful mm -hmm. and become more grateful for their lives, become more aware of God yeah. and, uh, and the blessing that we're and the miracles that we are. So I think the schooling system, you know, in the future, I would love to see more subjects on mindfulness, meditation, you know, more discussions on, you know, um, the self, uh, mental health, and maybe in sports and PE, start putting in some yoga. Why not? So that's that's maybe one of the answers. I'd say. Well, I mean, it's 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 you that's going to make this change. So. Yeah, I'm, I, inshallah, God that's willing. A, if God if willing. that can be your mission, that will be. It is, and, it is and I'm one in of the if things. You, if you need me, for it sure. is. It is one of the things, and I think we've touched on this in the past, and yeah. it really is one of the things that I do want to get into. I okay. think impact is to the mass, and the mass is, you know, the youngsters. Yeah. That's where the real impact is yeah. and future. So I think it has to start there. We can continuously try alongside our, you know, on network or friends or you know people that are around our age or our generations but i think the future generations are what matter because it would la would be more impactful starting this journey at a much younger age because i can't imagine how i would be i mean to be very honest with you that is amazing and yes that should be a mission for people like me and you that have this knowledge to share this knowledge and to try to create change but as you said amazingly before I think having people like you um, that are able to have this conversation and project that outwards, be the model for these younger Emirati men and women to, to see what it what what this looks like. So the most I think the most important thing is for more people like you to rise and to I mean this and to goes, present that this, outwards. This goes both ways. I mean I'm you know, I think it's very admirable what you're doing. And I think, you know, I'm very grateful to be here and to share this conversation with you. I'm really, I've really enjoyed it. It's actually helped me a lot. I hope it has with you. And and I think this, you know, it's not about me and it's, it goes both ways, really. I think, I think we're both trying to create pos as much positive impact in life for ourselves and then for, you know, our friends, family, and, and future generations, inshallah. And I think this is a very, very important topic that people need to focus on. Mental health, the self, you know, 
maybe get yoga into PE classes. <laughs> yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> not as a competition. Also, that's, that's a good point where like you kind of teach children not everything is a competition. Because yes. yoga, there's no competition yes. in yoga. It's yes. you and your mat. Yes. That that really gives something beautiful to youngsters. Yes. That every sport you play, I used to play football. Football, I want to be first, I want to win, and that's fantastic. Yes. It's good to drive, be motivated. It's also good to unite and yeah. focus on you and realize that you're on your own journey. Yeah. And I'm not racing it's with funny, anybody It's else. funny you're saying that about yoga. We're going to get into a new topic now. It's funny you said that about yoga because when I started practicing yoga uh, about, yeah, it was about maybe three, three years ago, um, that was my biggest, the biggest takeaway at the beginning was this competitive edge that I had. Is that I used to sit on the mat and think, you know, I'm a mm. professional athlete too. I mean, I, I played multiple sports. So... I, 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 on the mat, I'll look at everybody else and compare myself. And, and it was the one moment where I was like, okay, I really need to stop comparing myself and just be me, just, just be, you know, just kind of get into it and go inward. Yeah. That changed everything for me. My yoga imagine. just went like yeah. that. Um, and it's, you know, it's a, it's a beautiful way this, physical represent represented physically you know to 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 learn that as you're saying competitiveness has its place for sure but it also a lot of times doesn't <laughs> you know and acceptance has to replace that exactly. so uh Couldn't Ahmed, thank you more. so much thank you i really i really appreciate I you appreciate you i appreciate uh, your you time so and everything you're doing honestly yeah. and appreciate we will it. we will I'll definitely have you again Looking forward to it. And I'll come attend one of your classes. Sure. <laughs> you must. You must. And whoever's watching, I mean, by all means, yes, more please. than welcome. Can you tell people where to find you or how to So get currently in with I'm you? teaching in uh, Inspire, Inspire Me uh, Yoga in uh, Al Manara. Okay. Uh, soon I will be going uh, back into my practice in Kayani Wellness. Okay. I've just temporarily stopped, as you can probably hear in this discussion. I needed some time to work on my own practice. But soon I will be back in Kayani. And I actually think there's many other teachers there. So it's not about coming to my class. I think just doing yoga in general. Kayani is a great place and uh, inspire me as well. There are many other studios as well that have that are doing this and are helping people get into this beautiful practice. And I'll be honest, I did it at, uh, at uh, Shimmy's for a while. So Shimmy's is also a great place to be. So I think, you know, it's just, it's just all about starting, you know. Yeah. But I would love for anyone to come and join my classes because again, the concept of the journey flows quite different with the poems and, you know, the whole messaging and maybe, I mean, you know, being an Emirati male might be a bit different for them. But again, so long as they start the practice, that's what's important. If they do it with me, I'm grateful. And if they don't, I'm also grateful that at least you've gone and done it. Okay. And started somewhere. Other than that, to get in contact with you directly through Instagram or your website, whatever, is there anything you yeah, can... Yes, so Instagram is uh, Mohamed F. Mustafa. So it's M-O-H-A-M-M-E-D-F, M-O-S-T-A-F-A. And I think that's the best way to get in touch on okay. Instagram. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, thanks again. Thank you. And Appreciate it. we will meet again for sure. For sure. Okay. Looking forward. Masana.